Greetings, dear friends! I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Nissan Note. The suspensions of the BO platform, as we know from Logan and its ilk, are excellent. On the Note it is not identical, but similar. Yes, there is different stiffness of the silent blocks and other forms of levers. The suspension also runs for a long time, and if you urgently need spare parts, then literally in any village a vest store will offer you levers from Largus. Most of the elements of the front suspension have a resource of 100 plus thousand kilometers and their rear even more. The amount of high quality non-original is huge, however, and there is enough outright rubbish among the spare parts. Especially beware of bad rear supports and the front arm and shock absorber supports. In case of an unsuccessful choice, these elements have a near zero resource, up to 10,000 kilometers. Springs, shock absorbers and stabilizer struts are in many ways compatible with Largo slogan, Either they get bolt-on or require minimal alterations. The rear beam has almost permanent bushings and bumps and knocks are usually the result of wear on the aforementioned lower shock absorber mounts. More problems with the front subframe where you need to check the condition of the silent at each MLT test. Due to the design features it's very loaded and in the case of wear of the rubber bands and breakdowns of the front supports it quickly breaks the fasteners, especially on cars with automatic transmission due to arrangements of the box supports. The structure of the stretcher itself is also quite delicate. Damage to its geometry regularly occurs during overloads and impacts. Fortunately, the cost of the part is ridiculous by the standards of European cars, less than 7000 rubles for a new compatible one. As I said, the steering is very different between European and Japanese cars. The European ones have a EUR on the steering column shaft and the JDM cars have a hydraulic booster. Oddly enough, the later option is much more reliable. In any case, breakdowns on the steering rack or pump are a rarity that happens with 200 plus mileage. But with the EUR everything is not so simple. But the early wear of the spine connection of the steering column and the knocking of the rack itself is just a consequence of the use of such an amplifier circuit. In addition, such a mechanism heavily loads the aforementioned silent blocks of the subframe, which give rise to additional knocks and blacklash. The design itself, which doesn't allow the car to move only with the rear axle thrust on a dirt road, is doomed. It's not clear what its meaning was according to the designer's intention, but due to the presence of an electric motor and all-wheel drive, cars do not have a spare wheel and the body structure has been changed. But there is an extra 4 cm of ground clearance, which makes a life a little easier for them in winter. Choosing the car with the manual gearbox usually allows you to forget about transmission problems. Drives and CV joints do not cause trouble if the anthers are intact and the car didn't get into the next mood. The 5-speed manual gearbox of the F5 series Aka RS5F is distinguished by a rather noisy operation and a high wear rate of the 5th gear clutch. In principle, there is nothing wrong with that. The clutch changes even without removing the box from the car, but the noise is successfully treated by pouring a larger volume of oil. You can even switch to ATF DX2, in some cases it helps. The longitudinal play of the input shaft is also often manifested, which gains the effect mainly on the noise of the MCP operation. The hum of the secondary shaft bearings is even less common, and this trouble is already more serious. It can result in a breakdown of the box body. But if the oil level was not missed, then the chances of catching such a nuisance are very small. With normal maintenance changing the oil at least once every 60-90 thousand and the absence of leaks, the chances are high that the box will outlive the car. And if something knocks inside, do not be lazy, contact the service for disassembly and diagnostics. Automatic transmissions are still better than manual transmissions. The main automatic transmission on European cars is the Jetco RE4FO3A, an almost eternal first step, which was put on the Nissan for a very long time. Moreover, they put it even with a 3.0 engine, and even a 1.6 or 1.5 engine on Japanese note definitely cannot damage it. There is almost nothing to tell about it, it can be damaged either by overheating or by a strong and long oil leak due to wear of the torque converter oil seal at high mileage. It also happens that after 300,000 due to the extreme wear of the valve body solenoids, the pressure in the clutch packs will drop and they will burn out. In general, you need either a huge mileage or a cross operational error. At the same time, a used box costs from 15 to 40,000 rubles, and you can put a Japanese one on a European with minor alterations, which particularly closes the issue of overhauls, they simply do not make sense. Right-hand drive cars are mainly equipped with another automatic transmission, the JF009E variator, aka REOF08A. The unit as a whole is also very reliable, although the list of potential problem areas is known. This is a belt, 
abrupt winter starts are to blame, and a step motor. Numerous acceleration and deceleration cycles are to blame. Poor maintenance will kill it easily, and CBT oil is relatively expensive and extremely reluctant to change. And very few people change the external fine filter according to the regulations, although on aging machines it should be changed not once every 60,000 run, but every 2030. But even in such conditions, this automatic transmission in most cases calmly passes up to runs of 250 300,000 if the oil was changed at least occasionally and the movement was relatively unhurried. Well, if you are not lucky, then the average repairs of this variator usually include replacing the step motor and bearings of the cones. Usually along the way, they also check the operation of the solenoids and the pump. If the cones and belt are damaged, it's easier to replace it as an assembly, because even a used set of cones and a belt on the node is more expensive than a whole unit with the guarantee. There is also a small nuance associated with the variator cooling system. Before the first restyling, the CVT had a completely classic cooling system with a heat exchanger in the cold radiator reservoir. Reliable and efficient enough. But on cars after restyling, the cooling system was changed by transferring the heat exchanger directly to the variator itself. The second scheme for the variator has its advantages, because the torque converter in the variator heats it very weakly, and mainly at idle. And heating the variator directly from the engine allows it to reach operating temperature faster. But there is also a downside. Even with a new heat exchanger, the variator heats up to a temperature of 90 plus degrees under load, which is no longer very good. Over the years, the heat exchanger becomes clogged, especially if the oil is rarely changed and the filter is not cleaned. A clogged heat exchanger guarantees a temperature of 120 plus, which is already a lot for this design. At the same time, the belt works normally, but the solenoids and the step motor, as well as the oil pump, wear out very quickly. As well as the bearings that rotate in the box body, their preload is not designed for such an operating temperature. The main engines of the Russian raccoons are the 1.4 CR14DE and 1.6 HR16DE gasoline engines, the right-hand drive, 1.5 HR15DE and the European K9K diesel engines of the same displacement are less common. The auxiliary equipment doesn't have any particular difficulties, but it should be noted that the exhaust system, engine mounts and the capricious ignition system have a very small resource as well as very dirty throttles of all gasoline engines. The cooling system doesn't please with radiators afraid of road reagents. Their lower part creeps over time and they flow quite often. Motors 1.4 liter 88 horsepower, the CR14DE series, quite modern in design and represent a spherical Japanese subcompact motor in vacuum. The cylinder block is aluminum, the liners are cast iron, the engine is very compact and long stroke. Timing drive, chain, there is one phase regulator on the inlet. Of course, a catalyst and exhaust manifold combined into one unit, and the car has a very compact intake, there are no hydraulic lifters, and the design is designed for low viscosity oils. In general, it turned out well. The piston resource is about 200,000 before a significant oil consumption appears. But a full flagged overhaul is not needed here, usually everything is in order with the pistons, the rings just lie. If finances are tight, you can try to cope with this problem by chemical decoking, although it's better, of course, to change the rings. The valve stem seals also fail, but they can be changed without removing the cylinder head. Another question is that with runs of order of 200,000, the timing chain usually already requires replacement. In general, the engine is quite reliable. The main thing is not to overheat too much and change the oil on time. It's advisable not to abuse two liquid oils OW20 with runs of more than 100,000. The engine works great on 5W40 and 5W30. It's better to change the oil often every 7-8 thousand. Adjustment of well clearance is required every 80-100,000 km, but on this motor they rarely deviate greatly from the norm, and in the absence of obvious signs of incorrect adjustment, you can pull a little with this operation. The HR15DE and HR16DE motors differ only in piston stroke. So we will consider them together. The design is similar in everything to the CR family, but the block is slightly larger, plus the intake mechanism and oil pump are different. Unfortunately, the resource of the piston group is also limited by the increase in oil consumption due to coking and a high mileage. The motor is knocked strongly with the piston scared cold, but this problem with careful operation is not a reason to capitalize on it. But the resource of the timing chain and the need for a systematic adjustment of bell clearance are frustrating. Chains can stretch out after 150,000 mileage, and by 250 they will almost certainly need to be replaced. Clearance adjustment is carried out by the selection of very expensive tapets, and in the service where these sets are available, 
and it must be turned every 60,000 if you do not want to change the camshaft as well. Regularly, adjustment is needed every 100,000, but this is clearly an overestimating figure. If the machine is equipped with HPO, then the valves will have a very hard time and the adjustment needs to be carried out even more often. Pulling or relying on hearing is not worth it. The valves burn out very quickly, detonation under load is easy, and wear on the camshaft and camshaft pad will be another expensive surprise. Many people complain about the difficulty in replacing spark plugs. A long intake manifold must be removed before the operation. By and large, this is not a problem for a good master, but the torn threads of the candles in the cylinder head are already serious. The head is very delicate, it's best to pull the candles on the cold and using the recommended torque using a torque wrench. By the way, about the candles, look into the wells. They are often filled with oil due to dry sealant or gasket. It's not so difficult to eliminate the leak, just remove the valve cover. Another global and regular problem is the breakdown of the ignition modules and the engine control unit. The latter happened for two reasons. First, water gets into the ECU and then corrosion spreads. Secondly, the block case like to burn out when the control current on the phase regulator or oil pump solenoid is exceeded. A new unit costs more than a thousand euros. The choice of old ones is limited by the type of engine, although in large cities there is a good choice for this assembly. So after 2012, the control system changed, in particular a relay appeared in the unit. If the car loses its keys or it doesn't start well, then it's quite possible that it has problem with the ECU and it will not be easy to repair it. There are very few cars with diesel 1.5 K9K. The engine is not bad, but overloaded liners and capricious fuel equipment can cause a lot of trouble. First of all, check the engine oil filter. If there are copper particles, feel free to count on a major overhaul. On this, information about Nissan Note problems is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.